Hello everyone, welcome back to Vicki's Country Home. I have had a lot of requests for this video and I know there's others out there. This is my way of doing it. Today I'm going to pressure can bacon. Fair warning, this is not an officially approved recipe. But I have been doing this for quite a few years and we have eaten a lot of canned bacon. So I've made the decision after all my research that I am okay with this for my family, but please go do your own research and make your own decision for your family. So let's get started with canned bacon. So a lot of people can bacon and they use parchment paper and they use strips of bacon and they fold it up and do all that. I don't do any of that. For my purposes, I'm going to mostly cook with this bacon and not so much cook it for eating strips of bacon. So I don't care if it's in beautiful strips. And because of that, I buy bacon ends and pieces in a bulk package. So this is all the scraps from when they cut those nice strips of bacon. You can usually get this for less. And for what I use it for, it works perfectly because when you brown it up after you take it out of the jar, it's nice little bacon bits, which is perfect. So whatever you're canning the bacon for, it, whether it's SHTF, whether it's for convenience, like I do. If I want strips of bacon, I keep a supply in my freezer so that I can pull out and in a very short time it's thawed and I can cook those strips. If I need it for convenience sake, for a recipe or if it's SHTF and you need it, chances are you're not going to be needing strips. So this just works great, saves you money, and it's a whole lot less work than the other method. But again, do your own research and decide what your family is going to use it for. Now see, some will come in strips, but they're not complete strips. So I take it out of the package and kind of break it up a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be crammed in a jar. So this is going to be prepared cold. So for this, your pressure canner, and it must be pressure canned, has cold water in it with a little vinegar. My jars are cold. I will heat up my lids because that's what I do. But for the most part, this is all cold because this starts out cold, so the jars and the water all have to be cold. So it's so easy. So I'm going to use mostly half pints because these are for recipes and normally if I'm going to add it to beans, green beans, macaroni and cheese, whatever I'm adding it to, it doesn't, I don't need a whole pound of bacon. And basically this is going to hold about half a pound, believe it or not, this little half pint jar. So I don't want to can it in, in pints, or can all of it in pints, when that's not how I will use it. Again, decide for yourself what works for you. And I'm not even going to use the funnel on this because it's going to get messy and greasy and I'm going to have to clean them all anyway. So I'm going to do this the easy way. So what the main thing you have to do, let me move these jars out of my way so you can see. The 
the most important thing is as you fill the jar, you are going to pack it down very well. And you can use your fingers for this or a spoon or something, not metal because you don't want to scratch your glass. But I found this little plastic mojito muddler and it works perfect because it's flat and I can really press down on it. And then it can go in the dishwasher, so it's perfect. So I'm gonna, I do about half and then I'm gonna add more and then press that down. Because it's easier to get the air out in stages than it is all at the, at the end. But honestly, this couldn't be easier. Oh my goodness, we've been having rain. I just heard thunder. They said we might. We almost never get that, and when we do, it's usually not a good thing because the fire danger here. So basically what you were trying to do is smash it down as much as possible, leaving little or no air pockets because that could in affect the safety of this when it's finished. So just push it down as much as you can. Leave about an inch headspace and that's very important because this is very greasy. And there may be some that gets out anyway, but you try and get as little of that as possible. So I'm bringing it up to one inch headspace. And there's really no rhyme or reason. Put it in the jar, cram it down. Now each of these packages has three pounds of bacon. So I am going to make 12 half pints, which would be about six pounds of bacon. And then I'm going to use pints for the rest. So I will probably get 12 hash, half pints and I will get three pints if it works out correctly. And almost always it has. And again, you know that everything needs to be very clean when you start out. You need to keep it clean. You need to have vinegar on hand to help you clean these jars when you're all finished filling them. So I'm going to finish putting all this bacon in these jars and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to prepare them and put them in the canner. So we'll be back. Okay, I have filled all my jars and I got a total of 12 half pints and 5 pints. So I actually got 2 pints more than I thought I would. So what I did is I went through, as I showed you, I put the bacon in there and I pressed it down as much as I could. This really helps with the smaller jars. With the larger, I usually just use my hand. Then I took the debubbler, and you can use a chopstick, whatever you use. I like this because it really gets down in the jar. And I want to make sure that there's no air voids. And that almost always leaves a little extra room at top. So I had just exactly enough 
to fill that last jar. So, now I'm going to get these ready to go in the canner. So let me move this out of the way, clean my hands, and I'll come back and show you how to do that. The first thing I'm going to do, because I didn't use a funnel, but for me, even using the funnel, I still get grease all over the rims. First thing I do is take a dry paper towel. And I clean the rim and even the rings a little, just because there's so much grease. And I just want to get as much off as possible. So that is the first step. And I've already done this once, so now what I'm going to do is take some hot water and go over it again. I don't normally do this for my other canning, but because this has so much fat, I want to make extra sure that my rims don't have any of the fat left on it. And just turn it and use a fresh edge. And because you don't have to keep your jars hot, you can do these all at once in a batch instead of doing jar by jar. All right, now that I've wiped them with a dry paper towel and then a hot, wet paper towel, now I have vinegar. So I'm just going to repeat this using the vinegar. Again, I want to get every speck of grease that I can. Maybe this is overkill. But I would sure rather do this than risk my jar, the seal failing. So to me, it's worth this extra couple of minutes. All right, I have all my jars cleaned as I can get them. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start getting the lids on these. I think I'm going to start with the pints because they're going to go in the bottom of the canner. And I'm using Tatler lids. So if you're not familiar with them, they're reusable canning lids. That They're two pieces. It's the plastic lid and a separate gasket that goes on there. And to use them, you finger tight and then you back off just a touch and then that one is ready for the canner. So again, just so you can see, it's the plastic lid with the red gasket. Center it on your jar. finger tight, back off just a touch. Now for the half pints. 
and I'm using regular canning lids with these. Alright, I've got all of my jars of bacon in the canner. I'm, I have cold water and vinegar in it. I'm going to bring it up to heat and to pressure slowly. And then I'm going to let it vent for 10 minutes and process these jars for 75 minutes. And for me at 15 pounds of pressure, you need to check the pressure for your altitude, but I'm at high altitude, so I'm at 15 pounds of pressure. So I'm going to get these jars canning, and then I'll bring you back to show you what these beautiful jars of bacon look like. Okay, I've got all of my bacon out of the canner and it looks beautiful and I will tell you there was almost nothing that got into the canner. I don't think anything evacuated into it. There was a little bit of grease that maybe was on the outside of the jars, but the water is almost completely clear. So I got 12 jars of half pints of the bacon and I got five pints of the bacon. And they all look beautiful. They all look like they're gonna seal perfectly. So we'll come back and show you what it looks like. I finished these up last night. I pressure canned them for 75 minutes brought the pressure down very slowly and let them sit in the canner for a little bit before I took them out just to make sure that they didn't evacuate. And I don't think there was any evacuation. I think there was a little tiny bit of grease on the jars from my handling them, but the water was mostly clear. So these all look beautiful and I got a dozen half pints and I had five pints one of them was sealed when I first took the ring off but within an hour it the the lid came off so I refrigerated it and I'm going to use that tonight so it will be fine for that and I think what it is is I think maybe that Tatler lid, the gasket, some of these I think may have been used up to their limits. So I think that one probably just needs the gasket to be replaced. And that's the beauty. You don't have to replace the whole thing. You just replace this little rubber gasket after I think it's around 10 uses. And that one probably is at that age. But everything else sealed really well. I'm going to label these and put them on my shelf, and we are going to enjoy them so much. Again, it's a perfect way to have things ready to go, free up space in your refrigerator and freezer. And if it's for SHTF, they're perfect. They, they keep well and you have the fat, which is a very important thing. You'll have it to cook with, to flavor with, and you need some fat in your diet. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. God bless. We'll talk again soon.